Testament lesson, we have a story of a time in the nation of Israel when God had become displeased with Saul, the king. And he instructed the prophet Samuel to go out to a certain home and identify whom the next king was going to be. And so he goes to the home of a man named Jesse and reviews all his sons and finds none of them to be the one God has identified. He's a little frustrated, and so he asks Jesse, don't you have any more sons? And Jesse replies, well, there's, there's the little brat David, you know, but he's out tending the sheep right now. Jesse tells, is told, go get him. And as soon as David walks into the room, Samuel knows that this is the one God has chosen. And so he pours oil all over his head as a symbol of God's selection for a special purpose. I imagine that incident stuck in David's mind when he wrote the 23rd Psalm, which we shall hear from in just a few minutes. But our first lesson is from the first book of Samuel, chapter 16, verses 1 to 13. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil, and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, How can I go? Saul will hear about it and kill me. The Lord said, Take a heifer with you, and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one whom I will indicate. Samuel did what the Lord said. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town trembled when they met him. They asked, Do you come in peace? Samuel replied, Yes, in peace. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things that man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and had him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, the Lord has not chosen this one either. Then Jesse had Shammah pass, but Samuel said, Nor has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel, but Samuel said to him, The Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse answered, but he is tending the sheep. Samuel said, Send for him, and we will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent and had him brought in. He was ruddy with a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, Rise and anoint him. He is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. Samuel then went on, to Ramah. Here is the first lesson. The 23rd Psalm is probably the most well-known and most loved portion in all of Scripture. It has comforted many people in times of crisis, and it has been read at countless funerals. It's a psalm that speaks about how God is with us in our challenges. It does not say that God will remove the challenges from us, but rather that God will support us and sustain us through these challenges, and that God will provide us with what we need. The second half of the psalm speaks about our response to God's goodness, how we will worship and praise Him all the days of our life. If you remember it, and hopefully if I do, you can recite the words of the 23rd Psalm with me now. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is our psalm. Our New Testament lesson is part of Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus, a city in modern-day Turkey. And it carries the themes of light and darkness, sight and blindness. It's not to say that people who do not know or have a relationship with God are in the dark, but rather they are darkness itself. And once we develop that relationship with God, we become the reflected light of God. We become light. Remember Jesus said, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. From Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 5, beginning at verse 8. St. Paul writes, For once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the untruthful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything is exposed by the light and becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake. Arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Here's our New Testament lesson. In our Gospel this morning, we have a remarkable story from the Gospel of John. The story about a man born blind. Now keep in mind that in Hebrew society and beliefs, misfortune was a sign of God's judgment for sin. And so here we have a man who was born blind. Which begs the question, was there some sin that he committed at birth? Or was this man being punished because of the sins of his parents or grandparents? Jesus intervenes and heals the man. But the church has a remarkable negative response to what Jesus did. They feel challenged by this miracle. And so they confront the man who is astonished that they don't believe that Jesus was able to do such a thing. And so they bring the man's parents in. And the parents are afraid to say anything because they're afraid of being put out of the temple. Anyhow, let's hear this remarkable story from the Gospel of John, chapter 9, beginning at verse 1. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground, made mud with the saliva, and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed, and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, It's me. I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? 
He answered, The man called Jesus, made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I don't know. They brought him to the Pharisees, this man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes. Then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God. He does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and received his sight. So they called for the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son, whom you say was born blind? How then does he see now? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But we do not know how it is that he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age, ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been born blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, you are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sin, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when they found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, and who is he, sir? Tell me that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking to you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard him and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sinned. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to pause for a second while our technology department does something with the video camera. And...